Hey folks, Scott Walters here. Welcome to another rainy day at the Bulletproof Garage. In this episode, this is episode seven for Project Brutus. We are focused on one thing, the Dana 60 front differential, all right? We, in this episode, it's going to be the first of a multi-part series on the Dana 60. In this episode, all we're going to do is we're gonna disassemble, clean, and paint the housing on the Dana 60. And in the, in the following episodes, we're gonna work on refreshing slash rebuilding and reassembling, all right? So be sure and check out those other episodes as well. Okay, you know what's coming. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Here in a Bulletproof Garage. All right, folks, what we've got here is a Dana 60 front differential out of a 1994 F350, all right? It's a kingpin style differential. Now it came out of a parts truck so I'm really not sure about um, how well it was working or if it was working at all. So we're gonna go ahead and do a basic refresh, all right? We're gonna pop off the hub, we'll get the axles out, we're gonna go through the kingpins as well, and while we're at it, um, we'll go ahead and um, replace the pinion seal as well as the inner axle seals, all right? So we're gonna have to take the actual differential out, and, and while we're at it, we're, we need to verify that it's actually got 410 gears because that's what Brutus has got in the rear, 410s or 411s. So um, we want to make sure, obviously, that they're matching front and rear. All right, so let's get after it. All right, first step is to remove the brake caliper retaining pin so we get the calipers off. Uh, that was easier than expected. Then we'll get the hub off. All right, uh, let's start working on the hub. Uh, first, there's a Phillips head screw that needs to come out on the selector switch. And then uh, you've got six Allen head bolts, and what do I have here? I've got nine sixty fourths. All right. All right, and there it is. And there's a Phillips head screw that needs to come out. This one looks like it's stripped. <laughs> well, it's coming. All right, now we get two snap rings to get out. This one you can usually get a small screwdriver in behind it and get it started. All right, that's one. And the other one, you need snap ring pliers. All right, that's that. Now, go ahead and reinstall a few of your bolts here. There you go, and that comes out. All right, uh, so here's where you need a specialty tool. So you've got two spindle nuts to get off, and I have got a 
Performance Tool W1273 two and a half inch spindle nut um, socket. All right, so um, different size than a Dana 44 and Ford and Chevy Dana 60s and Dodge Dana 60s don't necessarily use the same one. So, um, and there are two types of tools that you'll see. One that has just got these four um, little prongs sort of hanging out in the breeze, all right? Not real strong. So this one, as you can see, has got this reinforced ring around the prongs. A, uh, appears to be a stronger and a better uh, socket to me. Uh, and this cost, I picked it up at O'Reilly's. I think Advance carries it too. It was 25 bucks. So, all right, let's get them off. All right, that's spindle nut number one. Now, um, I will say that it does look fairly good inside here. Um, it appears to have fresh grease. Um, now, once I get all the parts cleaned up, I'll see if anything needs to be replaced. Besides. All right, and then there's a spacer that comes out next. All right, that's this guy here. And then one more spindle nut. All right, there you go. Yeah, it should slide off at this point. Now well, the other side didn't either. All right, as you can see, I've got the bearing and the seal still attached here. That should have come off with the hub, all right? Um, but it's no big deal to get it off from here. All right, next step, these five nuts need to come off. All right, and then you've got caliper bracket and dust shield. <clears throat> and then the axle just slides out. Okay, now we're moving on to the upper kingpins. These are spring-loaded as well, so you don't want to loosen the bolts all the way. And I'll finish it off with a ratchet. All right, <clears throat> and there you go. It actually looks fairly good in there. Um, it looks like it's been serviced recently. Um, the grease looks fairly fresh. All right. Teflon bushing uh, looks fairly good and uh, the kingpin itself looks fairly good. Okay, folks, we're working on the lower now. Um, so this gave me fits yesterday, and um, I couldn't get this top plate off, this top cover off. 
Um, the bolts came out fine, but the cover didn't want to come off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and grease this up and maybe that'll help us out a little bit. Yeah. You see, just like yesterday, this thing is not moving, all right? So, uh, and I've got grease pushing out here as well. So, it's time to get kinetic. All right, good. As you may be able to see, it's starting to move a little bit. Maybe it's a grease that did it. All right, there you go. And now this will come off. And that comes out. All right, good progress. Usually, the uh, ring gear has the ratio on it somewhere, or at least the number of teeth. If not, we can always count them in the, uh, the teeth and the pinion gear and do a little math. Okay, here we go. Okay, 4110. So 41 is going to be the number of uh, teeth on the ring gear, and 10 is going to be the number of teeth on the pinion gear. And I'm going to do a little public math here, and that comes out to 410. So that's good news. Yeah, and it, uh, it does look pretty good inside. The oil doesn't look um, brand new, but it doesn't look terrible. Uh, I don't see any chip teeth. Um, I don't see any big hunks of metal hiding down in there, so um, we'll still pop out the, car the, uh, the actual diff, I think, and, uh, and change the inner axle seals and change the pinion seal, but um, yeah, it's looking good. All right, folks, now I'm going to go ahead and remove the pinion nut, the pinion yoke, and then change out the pinion seal. Um, and obviously, if you're just going to reassemble it with the original parts, used parts, which is what I'm going to do now, um, and not going ahead and, um, and setting up the diff again, uh, you want to make sure that you get everything in the same orientation as when it was taken apart. So I'm just going to take this little um, punch here and then put a mark in a corresponding location on the nut and on the yoke uh, so we get it in the uh, again so we get it installed in the same place and I'm going to put a mark as well on the, uh, the pinion and that should put us pretty close Okay, folks, now we're going to go ahead and remove the carrier. One thing I wanted to show you, so look at the cap right here, and you can see where it's stamped with a P. And on the housing right here, there's also a P um, stamped in the same orientation right next to the cap, all right? Now, on the other side, we've got the same thing. Um, it's also a P here, and it's a P there. So that makes it easy to get it back together correctly. Obviously they're both P's, but if you'll notice again, this one is left to right, and this one is 
up and down and they're the same on the caps so shouldn't have any issue with mixing these up all right let's go ahead and get the caps off Okay, now we've got to pry the carrier out, and uh, one thing we want to make sure of is we keep the races in the same orientation if we're not going to be replacing those. So, I like. There it comes. All right, folks, time to remove the pinion nut. So it's an inch and five sixteenths, and you've got to use a 12-point socket. I don't think a six-point or an impact socket will fit down in there. So I've got a three-quarter drive socket and an adapter on my half-inch um, impact. It's out. Alright, now I want to go ahead and tap the pinion out. I put the nut on here so the pinion is not going to drop out the bottom, at least not yet. Alright, well, it's already moving, so good. Let me go get a blanket to put under there. There you go. Yeah, everything looks good here too. All right, got a seal removal tool. Let's see if we can get the pinion seal out. Yeah, that doesn't look like it's gonna come easy. I might have to uh, to get it started first. All right, it's coming. All right, bearing looks good, race looks good. All right, now for the fun stuff, cleaning up nasty old hardware.
All right, time to have some fun. Uh, you can see the paint is loose here in a lot of spots already. I hit it with several shots of acetone last night. So uh, that top layer of paint, which I think is applied probably by the prior owner, is, uh, is coming off. So <laughs> let's get after it. Okay, folks, now it's time to remove the inner axle seals. You've got one on each side. Um, this is it right here. And there is a metal lip on the inside of it um, that you should be able to catch with a specialty tool, which happens to be my jack stand handle, uh, and gently tap it out. All right? Yeah, there are special tools made for this, and this definitely isn't one, but uh, I think we can get it done. Let's try the seal puller. I don't think this is going to do it, but maybe it will. Alright, so here's the seal, alright, and it sits in like so, as you can see, um, the back end, it's a little difficult to get something on there to pop it out with, um, but, uh, but I manage, and it's nasty in there, there's all sorts of crud in there, um, so I'm glad I got these out, it looked like they'd been replaced recently, but it needed to come out. All right, folks, that is it for this episode. I hope you learned something. I know I did. And be sure and check out the rest of the videos in the series when we go ahead and reassemble and install the Dana 60 in the Project Brutus, all right? Our 87 Crew Cab Diesel Dually Project Truck. And we'll see you next time on the Bulletproof Garage.